<coughs> if you stay, stay darling, stay in my corner, you make me oh, so proud. If you stay, stay darling, and I will never leave you lonely. If you stay, stay darling, stay in my corner. <laughs> Y'all remember that? That was my jam. I'm going to let you know right now. I'm going to let you know right now. Couldn't nobody put it down. Nobody put it down like Marvin Jr. Oh, my goodness. Marvin Jr. Shout out to the family and friends of Marvin Jr. If you stay Stay, darling. Okay, that's enough. Listen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, my illustrious, beautiful, wonderful family. First of all, let me welcome all of my new subscribers. I want to thank you all for supporting the channel. Thank you for being out there. We really appreciate it. Couldn't do it without you. Okay, so I want to thank you and welcome you. To the mental health. If you have any suggestions, anything you'd like to see done or talked about, uh, leave it in the comments section. And um, if I have any knowledge of it, especially if it has anything to do with show business, uh, I will definitely try to address it and make a video and hope that you'll participate. Okay? Uh, now, or anything pertaining to crazy. Okay? Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. That type. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And crazy. Okay, but you know what? Let me go ahead. Because I want to bring this story to y'all. And it's a little disturbing. Because the people are really, really angry, okay? And this has something to do with y'all's uh, best friend. Some of y'all who came are as certainly enamored with this family. I have no idea why. But for those of you who are, um, there is a story going around. Um that the surviving victims of an individual that, I guess, Kim Kardashian Spotify podcast um, is trying to free. Well, the family is kind of speaking out now because they saying that she never called us, not once. And this killing happened in uh, 1994. And so this is the subject of Kim's pod podcast. Um, but let me give you some backstory. Kevin Keith is the subject of Kim Kardashian's new podcast series, The System. The System. In 1994, he was convicted of murdering his ex girlfriend, Marichelle Chapman, her daughter, Marche, and Aunt Lydia, Lydia Chapman. So he was accused of. Murdered his ex girlfriend, Mar Marichelle Chapman, her daughter, Marche Chapman, and her aunt, Linda Chapman. Kardashian says he's innocent, was never given a fair trial, and should be freed. Quinta Quint Quanita and Quentin Reeves, age six and four at the time, were also shot, but they survived. Quentin is now 33, and he told the Daily Mail that Keith is the killer and that he saw him with his own eyes. 
He also claims Clem Kardashian never bothered to contact him or his sister and that she just wants to make herself look good without checking all the facts. She did not contact us not one time. Why aren't they contacting the victims? I don't care what Kim Kardashian says. He did it, and he shouldn't, and he's not getting out. Whoa. So that's a brother and a sister who survived the triple uh, murder. That is now the subject of Kim Kardashian's true crime podcast on Spotify. Kevin Keith was convicted of murdering his ex-girlfriend. I told y'all that. And this happened in, 19, in uh, Boosaris, Ohio. He has been in prison for 28 years, but insists he is innocent. Kim Kardashian believes him and has used his story as the launch pad for her Spotify podcast. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. You know, you, you have to do, I hope this is not true, because you got to do a lot of, of vetting before you try to get somebody uh, released from prison. Um, because it's really an insult to the people if these people witnessed the killing and her ass is sitting up there talking about it didn't happen. That's a problem. Well, what y'all think? Okay, because now this uh, <laughs> it's a big mess. They claim they were never invited on as guests. They never even heard from the uh, crusading uh, crew Kardashian. She did not even contact us. If Kim wants to get involved, she should come and meet with us face to face, said Quentin, who is now a father of two. The siblings, who were both shot in the stomach by the murderer, remain adamant that Keith is the killer. They say they knew him be because he was friends with their father and that they remember seeing him point the gun at their relatives. We saw it with our own eyes. You don't forget something like that. I don't care what Kim says. He freaking did it. Wow. Wow. They, they were age four and six when they survived the shooting. And their stories have not been included in Kim's new podcast. And they're very ticked off about it. She wants to get him out to make her look good. But the truth is, he should. we should have been the first call. Kevin gets to sit in jail and become a celebrity. Meanwhile, we're out here dealing with our entire lives. It's crazy. We still grieve. She said that the first time she heard from the team was Monday, October 3rd, the day the podcast went live. And it was a heads up from producer Lori Rothschild and Saudi. Neither Kim Kardashian or Carl Saudi, I mean, and Saudi responded to requests for a comment. This is not good. Sources close to the podcast claim the siblings were contacted. Quentin was four when the shooting happened, but says his memory is clear. I'm going to tell y'all something. I remember a whole lot of stuff when I was uh, four. In fact, my memory goes back relatively far. I remember telling my mother one time that I remember being in the uh, crib, and my I had contracted chicken pox from my, one of my older siblings, and you get those little, you know, pox. So I kept scratching it, and she told me not to scratch it, and I came, and she came back in, caught me scratching it again, and I was like, oh, she said, stop that, you know, and then put some gloves on my hand. So she said, how do you remember that? She said, you was just a little over a year, but I certainly remember. I wonder, I said, because I remember your ass hitting me, okay, scaring the living bejesus out of me. Y'all be surprised what children remember. That's why I go so hard for them. Okay? Uh, that's what makes it seem so hard. They don't account for that. They don't care how this makes us feel. And that's why they mad at the Kardashians. She said, I can still remember. This is what um, Quentin said. He said, it's been a long time, but I can still remember what the place looked like. I can draw it. I can tell you what it smelled like. He did it. Uh, and it's Quinita 
who was two years older, she has the same memory. It was Kevin. He came in and he shot up the whole place. The siblings both say that Kevin arrived at um, seemingly uh, the time seeming nervous. He came inside. He asked for multiple glasses of water and then suddenly retrieved the gun. He yelled for them to all get down on the ground and started shooting. Um, Marichelle, the sibling's 24-year-old cousin, screamed, What you doing? Why are you doing this? After the shooting, the murderer fled. Kevin was arrested days later, but insisted then as now that he thought he was being picked on, uh, thought he was being picked up on drug charges. I'm sorry. What? That's why he said he thought he was picked up? Anyway. The siblings say that they have since learned that their older cousin, Rudell, was a police informant who had just snitched on Kevin for dealing drugs. The prosecution argued that Kevin went to the home looking for Rudell to kill and punish him for snitching and instead found the whole family. Kevin, however, insists that he was in a different part of town. His alibi is that he was at his aunt's house, and many of his relatives say they can collaborate the story. Wow. Wow. This is a very interesting situation. Once police, one police report that is seized on by the Kardashians in the first two episodes of the podcast revealed that Juanita, then six, called Bruce, uh, called the killer Bruce. She described the shooter as her daddy's friend, Bruce. Also, she also failed to pick Kevin out of the lineup. Kardashian highlighted these two facts to reiterate why she thinks Kevin is innocent. But upon speaking to the Daily Mail, Juanita says that she just came out of surgery when she made that comment at age six and that she was scared and confused. I was terrified of being questioned. I'm in the hospital. I've just had surgery. It was a mistake for them to question me then. The mother, Joyce, later explained to the police that she often confused Bruce with Keith and that it was indeed Keith who opened fire on them. Warren, Marshall's boyfriend, fled the home. Marshall's, I'm sorry. Marshall's boyfriend fled the home. He has not spoken publicly about the shooting, and it's unclear if he will be a guest on a Kardashian podcast. What? If you don't have all players involved, this is this, these bets are off, baby. Because six more episodes are yet to be released. Kardashian, who is trained to become a lawyer, says that police rushed to charge Keith and that he's never had a fair trial. She says she first learned about the case in 2018 after Lori, then a producer on Family Feud, pitched her the story as one she could turn uh, she could turn famous. That's all it's about to them. That's all it's about. Kardashian has successfully lobbied the White House at a time to commute the sentence of Alice Johnson and release her from prison. Kevin's case, she said in the podcast, is one thousands is one of thousands that people have sent her since. So they think she really is some kind of lawyer. <laughs> they think these Kardashians, I guess, can work miracles. She's not a lawyer. So, at this point, you know, she's acting as pretty much a, you know, a student. A student lawyer. An apprentice. And I don't even think she's studying under, up under anybody. So, I take that back. Uh, Kevin's case, she said in the podcast, was one of thousands, again, that people have sent her. She tweeted about the case, claiming he's innocent. 
In 2020, she inked a deal with Spotify for True Crime Podcast for an undisclosed amount. While neither she nor Spotify has confirmed the, the figures she received, Alice Cooper, the host of Call Her Daddy podcast, was given a $60 million deal. The first two episodes of the system were released earlier this week. They focus on Keith's apparent alibi. He said that he was at his aunt's house and that was corroborated by multiple members of his family. Who It also focused on the fact that he was never questioned by the police. Instead, he was just charged. So Keith has always maintained his innocence and in support of public defender Rachel Taupman, who continues to fight uh, for a case review. So Keith was scheduled to be executed in 2010, but former Ohio Governor Ted Strickland commuted his death sentence at the 11th hour, citing important questions that remain unanswered. Well, we want to uh, cross the T's and dot all the I's for you put someone to death, especially, or even to take the rest of their life away from them. This stuff should have been done on the front end. Uh, the podcast has built the series as exposing a cover-up involving police corruption and another example of America's failed justice system. In an interview with Hollywood Reporter this week, Kardashian said Keith is innocent and that she wanted to shake shit up to make some noise. Well, the main thing that really stuck out was that someone could be convicted of a crime, let alone a triple homicide, without any physical evidence linking him to the crime. That he was, and then he was sentenced to death. Kevin has been in prison for 28 years, and for a crime that I believe he didn't commit. She says she was compelled to step in by the harm the case has done to his brother, who also believes in his innocence. Mm. Usually you think of the victims and their families and how their lives are affected, but there are other victims if someone is wrongfully accused of something. It doesn't just affect their life, it affects the entire family's life. Keith advocates hinge their belief in his innocence on the fact that there was no physical evidence linking him to the crime and because of how quickly he was charged and convicted. But Reeves siblings who are only who are are two of the only three witnesses to the shooting say their testimony should be considered as proof of uh, Keith's guilt, even if they were kids. Keith has unsuccessfully appealed his conviction multiple times, and the Supreme Court has turned down his request for them to review it. His case has galvanized critics from the criminal justice system who say that despite what the siblings says, a proper investigation was not carried out. Well, if that's the case, then that's what we needs to happen, I guess. There are six remaining episodes of Kardashian Spotify podcast for which she was paid an undisclosed amount again. She has already teased the second season, focusing on what she believes is another wrongful conviction. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Because I truly, truly hope that we get a chance to um, investigate this, if nothing else. Because there's too many people on death row or in, or in prison. Black people, more specifically, who haven't done nothing or who may have been the victim of some damn stupid plot of a corrupt police department and officer. So this needs to be examined a little further. I would agree. Okay, what y'all think about it? Let me know. Leave your comments below. And if you like what you hear, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next video.